Whenever I feel like my sweet picking is not quite up to snuff, I have a favorite arpeggio sequence that I practice to get it back into shape. And so can you. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben here reporting from my newly renovated home studio. It is a paradise of things that are nice over here. I'm going to do a full studio rundown for you guys soon, but first I got to show you guys my favorite arpeggio warm-up exercise. You guys are always asking me for some great sweet picking etudes, that way you can get your arpeggios in shape and become the next yin yang milkshake and the one I'm going to show you guys today is one of my absolute favorites. I'm going to show you guys how to play it and then give you a couple of tips to avoid some of the most common sweet picking problems. As always this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today for all kinds of exclusive content like bonus videos, backing tracks, downloadable tabs, and so much more. This week everybody who supports my channel is going to get access to a bevy of practice tracks that I made for this thing to help you get it up to speed in no time, as well as the downloadable tabs and a guitar profile. That way you can build your own perfect practice session. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my beloved ancient Ibanez RG550 with Fishman Fluence Classic pickups. And I'm playing that into the Synergy Steve Vai module, which is absolutely freaking awesome. But of course it is. My real dad designed it. And I'm running that into the Universal Audio Aux Box. Yeah, let's hear your new favorite sweet picking exercise again at stepdad speed. So all the arpeggios in this exercise take place on the top five strings of the guitar. It's gonna follow a chord progression that sounds like B minor, A major, B minor, A major, G major, F sharp major, G major, and A major. Let's start off with the B minor arpeggio. We're gonna play the 14 on the high E pulling off to 10. Then play the 12th B, 11th G, 12th D, and the 14 on the A string. So it looks like this. One of the most common arpeggio shapes that there is, your classic basic B minor arpeggio. Okay, we're gonna play an upstroke with a pull off, then continue with upstrokes throughout. Up, 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 up. Next we're gonna play the A major arpeggio. So shift that little finger down a whole step to the 12th on the A. We're gonna use a downstroke right here and play the uh, 12th A, 11th D, 9th G, 10th B, 9th high E, and then the 12 on the high E. So that's down, 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 up. So, so far we should have up, pull, up, 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 down, 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 up. Okay? Nice and smooth like that. Then restart the entire thing. Now because we ended with down, up, this time whenever we play B minor, we're gonna be starting off on a downstroke, which is kind of different from how we began. But it's okay, you got that pull-off to help you buy time to reorient your picking. So this time it's going to go down, pull, up, 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 down, 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 up. Okay, now at this point what we're going to do is to take that arpeggio shape you just played for the A major, and we're going to move it down a whole step to play G major. So we're going to play the 10 on the high E pulling off to 7. Again, this will be a downstroke at this point. 8th on the B, 7G, 9D. 10 on the A string. Then just move everything down a half step to play F sharp major. So we're going to play uh, the 9 on the A, the 8 on the D, 6 on the G, 
7 on the B, 6 on the high E, and then the 9 on the high E. 6, 9. Nice. And then we're going to go back to the G, so 10, pull to 7, 8, 7, 9, 10, and then creep back up a whole step to your A major. 12, 11, 9, 10, 9, 12. That gives us B minor, A major, B minor, A major, G major, F sharp major, G major, A major. strings a little out of tune. Is that bothering anybody else? Because it is me. Give me the G too. That should do. Okay, so that's the entire exercise. And you can just put that on loop. The practice tracks, the guitar pro track, it's just going to have that over and over and over like that. That way you can concentrate on keeping this so soft and silky smooth. Now let's talk about a couple of technique things that you can start implementing while you practice this to help you get these sweeps up to speed in no time. One thing that I really want to address here is what generates the movement of the pick. Now this is one of those things that you can try out a lot of different approaches with. There are some players that have amazing results with techniques that I don't use and vice versa, but I'll tell you what has worked for me. I call it the slow motion lawnmower. I kind of feel like I'm pull starting a lawnmower in very slow motion like this. You'll notice that the motion is kind of coming from the top of my shoulder, you know? I'm making it big so you can see it. It's obviously not that exaggerated, but whenever I play through the uh, arpeggio and I'm going through the strings like that, I'm not moving my wrist like this right here. I can't even do that really well. Whenever I do that, the reason I don't like doing it that way is because the angle of the pick is addressing the strings at totally different axes as I go up and down like that right there. You'll notice when I'm on the high E string, the pick is like almost vertical. And then if I was to rotate the wrist to get to the A string, the pick is now like parallel with the A. I would rather have a motion that maintains the same like pick to string angle the entire way through, just to keep the tone and the feel really consistent. And that's why I go with the invisible lawnmower. I'll kind of demonstrate. I'll just play that B minor up and down a few times for you here so you can watch. Again, watch like the top of my shoulder and the back of my elbow right here. You'll see it kind of dip down as I go through the strings. It's like the wrist isn't really doing much anything. That way I'm just concentrating on sawing through the strings both ways. The other benefit that that technique has is that it lets me slowly, progressively palm mute the strings. Way back, like a hundred years ago on my channel, whenever I did This Is Why You Suck At Guitar, Your Sweet Picking Sucks, I introduced a lot of people to that concept of progressive palm muting, where I'm not like floating above the strings, so to generate a ton of noise. I'm also not trying to mute them all at the same time, because that kind of sounds really choked out, right? What I'm doing is I'm progressively covering up the strings that I've already played and then uncovering them as I go down the arpeggio. Maybe you can see it better from this angle right here. It's like by the time I'm on the, the G string, my palm is covering the E, A, and D strings. That way they won't make any noise. But the G, B, and high E are still able to ring clearly. And then as I go down the arpeggio, you can see how I kind of uncover them as I go. So again, the uh, slow motion lawnmower thing lets me progressively palm mute and unpalm mute the strings. But again, that's not what everybody does. One of my favorite guitar players, and I think one of the most underrated players of all time, is Matthias Ia Eklund from Sweden. Phenomenal player. And uh, that guy, man, his technique is really kind of different. He has like a lot of exaggeration in the wrist. His pick is almost moving straight up and down the strings rather than kind of at an angle like I am. 
And he can, you know, absolutely sweep me under the table. So what do I know? Clearly that works really well for him. He also holds the pick with his, like, thumb and middle finger like Van Halen, too. Guy's just an amazing player. Um, but, you know, it's worth experimenting around with and seeing what you think works best for you and your technique set. I just know for me, this invisible lawnmower thing tends to work the best. Now, one thing I want to encourage you guys to do, too, and this is something I've never really mentioned before because I've just never really noticed that I do it, but a lot of times whenever I am ascending through an arpeggio, you know, specifically at certain tempos, it can get really kind of hard to tell where in the strings I am because my pick is just kind of, you know, blowing through the strings. It's kind of hard to know where you are. One thing that I noticed is because I bend my, my first finger, you know, give it the old Captain Hook kind of approach. Whenever I bend that first finger, it kind of rubs against the tops of the strings that I'm not playing yet. Just barely, it's just barely gracing. It's not enough to really even make any noise that you're gonna hear over the notes. But like, as I'm going through there, I can feel the top of that first finger just kind of graze the strings. And I feel like that kind of gives me a good sense of location of where I am. It's kind of like how a lot of people like to have their fingers anchored on the body because it gives them a point of reference. That's kind of how I feel about my old index finger skin getting, you know, shredded off of my, of my hand. Kind of gives me a sense of location. I think it's worth it. Again, don't dig in crazy hard or anything. Just enough to where you can kind of brush the top of the string and help you find your way around things. One thing you really want to watch for whenever you're practicing the sweet picking stuff, especially if you're new to it, is going to contradict probably a lot of the stuff that you've heard about sweet picking. Generally speaking, everybody tells you to try to keep the notes super even, right? No notes that are louder than other notes. Kind of, sort of. I want you guys to really smack the crap out of the first note of each arpeggio. Adding that rhythmic accent on the first note. This is really important. For one, it sounds cool because it's really boring to have something that is dynamically flat. Da 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 da. That's nothing, right? You'd much rather hear really grooving and accenting like a drummer would. I also find that it just helps me stay in time a whole lot better than if every single note that I play sounds the same. That's hard to keep track of, but if it's where I'm really smacking that first note of every arpeggio, it keeps me in time so much better. So be sure as you practice these to really lean into that first note. guarantee it's going to sound better, it's going to feel better, and your rhythm is going to be a whole lot more better. So there you go guys, one of my favorite arpeggio warm-ups. I've done that thing backstage for like a hundred years now, and I predict it's going to become one of your favorites too. So be sure to keep it nice and smooth, slowly increase the speed with that metronome, and always make sure you're keeping the groove by accenting the crap out of the first note of every arpeggio. You're going to get even more out of this if you download this practice tracks on the Patreon page and the guitar profile and the tabs and everything else. So be sure to sign up today even at just a one dollar a month level. It's going to give you access to all that stuff and a whole bunch more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell down there for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. And for real, do hit subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. Checking out some of my like YouTube analytics not too long ago, and apparently like 60 to 70% of views on all of my videos come from people that aren't subscribed to the channel. Those are rookie numbers. Let's get those numbers up. So be sure to mash that subscribe button and uh, enjoy the ride. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Now, as for me, it's time to, um, well, I think probably explore the studio space a little bit here. But as for you guys, I recommend grabbing those practice tracks and getting to work on shredding this thing. Less clicking, more picking. <laughs>